Hello everyone. This slide is all about almost everything you need to know about probability. So I hope you have your notepad in front of you and we are ready to begin. So first, we study probability when we're looking at games of chance. Also, so that would mean cards, dice, lotteries, all those things have to do with probability. When we're looking at social science data, with regards to life and death, when we're looking at scientific data, in regards to variations in individual measurements, uh, when they're random, those are all different ways that we look at probability. Remember that when I say something is random, I do not mean it is haphazard. The big idea behind probability is that chance behavior is unpredictable in the short run, but it has a regular and predictable pattern in the long run. And that leads us then into something called the law of large numbers. And the law of large numbers says that if we observe more and more repetitions of any chance process, the proportion of times that a specific outcome occurs approaches a single value. So for example, if I flip a coin, and this also is the big idea, if I flip a coin, it's 50-50 heads or tails, but if I only flip a coin 10 times, it's quite possible that I might get seven or eight heads out of the 10 rolls because that's not a very that's not a very big sample size it's a very short run however the law of large numbers says that if I were to flip that same coin thousands upon thousands of times the proportion of times that the outcome heads will occur will approach the value of 50 percent because we know that theoretically that's what should happen the law of large numbers says that if your sample size is big enough that's what will happen so definition of random. We call the phenomenon random if individual outcomes are uncertain, but there is nonetheless a regular distribution of outcomes in a large number of repetitions. And again, the coin tossing idea is the same. A coin is random because we don't know from time to time what's going to happen. Is it going to be heads? Is it going to be tails? We don't know. But if we do a large number of repetitions, we would expect to see a regular distribution. We would expect to see 50% heads, 50% tails are something close to that. So even though a coin is random, we can still make predictions based on it if we do it enough times. Probability. Probability of any outcome of a random phenomenon is the proportion of times that the outcome would occur in a very long series of repetitions. This is the probability, in other words, is long-term frequency. Okay, and so then that's read mathematically we write that as P of A, so P with parentheses A, is the probability of event A. That leads us to two other definitions, sample space. A sample space of a random phenomenon is the set of all possible outcomes. An event is any outcome or set of outcomes of a random phenomenon. So a sample space is the set of all possible outcomes. If I'm flipping a coin, it's either heads or tails. All right, that's it. If I'm rolling a dice, it's either a 1, a 2, a 3, a 4, a 5, or a 6. That's my sample space. An event is the specific outcome. So if I flip a coin, the outcome is I got a tails. So that's the event. So an event is a subset of the sample space. Now, one of the things you'll have to do is you'll have to figure out the sample space because figuring out a sample space is very important. So for example, if we were to roll two dice, two regular dice, they have six sides, this would be the sample space for rolling two dice. You can either get a one and a one, or a one and a two, or a one and a three, or a one and a four, or so on. And notice that a one and a two and a two and a one, they are different things. They're not the same because the order changed. So when you write your sample space, there's six possibilities for the first dice, there's six possibilities for the second dice, 6 times 6, there's 36 possibilities total in our sample space. You can do a chart like this as well. So let's say we're going to first flip a coin and then we're going to roll a die. You can use a chart like this, a tree diagram, to help you organize your sample space. So it's a nice way to figure out what the sample space is. Let's say we flip three coins and we want to make a list of the possible things that can happen. So in the first possibility, we could get all tails. So tails, tails, tails. In the next possibility, we get two tails and one heads. Notice that the order of the heads has changed. Or we can get two heads and a tails, or we can get three heads. So altogether, we have eight possibilities. If you flip a coin, you have two choices. We're going to do that three times. Two times two times two. Eight choices. That's our sample space. A compliment. Great job. You look great. Nice haircut. No, not that kind of a compliment. A compliment 
consists of all outcomes that are not in the event. So for example, not rolling an even would be the complement of evens, 1, 3, and 5, and so on. Declaration of Independence, Independence Day, love that movie. Two events, A and B, are independent if knowing that one occurs does not change the probability that the other occurs. So for example, flipping a coin and rolling a dice. If I know I got a heads on the coin, on the coin, that's not going to have any effect at all on the dice. So two events are independent in that situation. So an example of independent events, first coin flip, second coin flip, rolling two dice, choosing two cards with replacement. So those are all examples of some independent events. Examples of events that are not independent. For example, choosing two cards without replacement. Scoring above a 600 on the verbal SAT versus scoring a 600 on the math SAT. Those things are not independent because if you score a 600 above, on, above a 600 on the verbal, you're probably a pretty smart person. You're more likely to have scored above a 600 on the math as well. So are these events independent? A person is left-handed, a person is an only child, and the person is blue-eyed. Yes, these events are independent. They have no relationship upon each other. But what about these? A person is a college graduate, a person is older than 25, or the person is a bank president. No, these events are not independent. You can't become a bank president unless you are also a college graduate and most likely older than 25. So these are all examples of the way that these things are related. So as far as another example, traffic lights. Suppose the timing of the lights on my morning commute, and I have a bunch of lights on my morning compute, commute, but let's suppose that the timing of the lights are independent. The probability of being stopped at a light is 60%, 0.6. I want to know what's the probability that I get through all, I'm going to use six of my lights because if I actually use the 15 lights on my route, the number would be too astronomically big. So I'm going to say probability of getting through all six lights. The way you would calculate that, well, if the probability of being stopped is 60%, then the probability of getting through is 40%. And I want to do that six times. So 0.4 times 0.4 times 0.4 times 0.4 and so on. So 0.4 to the sixth power. Probability I get stopped at all the lights. Well, we know the probability of getting stopped is 60%, so that's going to be 0.6 to the six. I get stopped at all of them. So I'm more likely to get stopped at all of them than I am to get through all of them. That leads us to something called a union. The union is the event A or B happening. It consists of all the outcomes that are in at least one of the two events. And the way we write that, well I'll get that in a minute, rolling a prime number or an even number. The union would be all the prime numbers and all the even numbers combined together. We write that as A with a little U symbol B. A union B. It's where you put the two together and you don't count the overlaps. An intersection, on the other hand, an intersection is the event A and B happening. So it consists of all the outcomes that are in both events. So in this case, for an intersection, it has to be both, the outcome has to be in both events. So for example, drawing a red card and a two. The event would be two of hearts and two of diamonds. Those are the cards that are both red and twos. And the way we write that is A with the upside down U, B. And that's an intersection symbol. Pretty easy to remember. If it looks like a U, it's a union. If it's upside down, it's an intersection. Which leads us to mutually exclusive, also referred to as disjoint. You're going to hear us use both of those words, mutually exclusive and disjoint. Uh, so you, they are interchangeable. You have to know the diff. There is no difference. You should recognize both of them. Two events are called mutually exclusive, disjoint, if they have no outcomes in common. So nothing in common. So for example, on a dice, a 2 or a 5. I can't get a 2 and a 5. If I can get a 2 or a 5, they are mutually exclusive. All right, I'll see you in class tomorrow. I hope you have good notes. And when you come to class tomorrow, you'll be ready to talk about probability and do some probability activities.